What's up, fishing fanatics? It's a bit earlier than we're used to. It was a long week. We're a little tired, but we're super excited. We're about to do Stan's favorite kind of fishing. Let's go. It was a rough ride out. The good news is we made it. Bad news, somebody's wearing the skunk hat. We had a couple hours to fish last weekend, so we went out to the coal dock in search for some sheephead. We had about four sheephead break us off immediately. Fish on. All right. Go ahead, girl. Oh, he broke me off. Got one. Ah, oh, broke me off. There we go. Got one. Got one. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me right now? So today we're seeking revenge. That was a short skunk. That doesn't count. Dealers. Help me with this guy? No. No? <laughs> Guys, this is what I would uh, categorize as a perfect <clears throat> opportunity to use your Just Grab It glove. I'd like to make a shameless plug for a second here. I don't particularly like touching oyster toadfish. It's what we call bait stealers. These guys and little black sea bass will steal your bait. Little black sea bass. Not again. <laughs> A stinky toad. Sea bass. Oh, I'm in the bait stealers again. Oh, not again. Pesky toad. You stinker. I've caught one of you at every single spot we've been to. So uh, my favorite kind of fishing is sheephead fishing, if you can't already tell. I grew up sheephead fishing with my dad. It was one of the one of my coolest favorite memories, fishing memories when I was younger. You know, we've got some jetties and we got some rocks and we've got some, uh, some seawalls and structures in the harbor in Charleston, which uh, were pretty easily accessible um, with a small boat when I was growing up. And here we are right here. This is the entrance of the, um, this is the jetty. So this is the entrance of the main shipping channel here in Charleston. 
is one of the, one of my favorite places to fish for a sheephead. The reason I like sheephead is because on light tackle they're a lot of fun. Not only are sheephead really fun to catch on light tackle, but they're also really good to eat. They're very delicious. When I fish for sheephead, um, a lot of people will tell you that you really want to be very sensitive to the bite and really feel it and try to set your hook really hard. Well, in my experience, and I've been doing this for a long time, I don't like immediately setting the hook like within the first split second, like as in a reaction. Um, what I like to do is I like to dial down, get the correct hook for the fish. And when you do that, oftentimes the fish will hook itself for you, I promise. So uh, that's really a key to catching these fish. Not only that, when you do feel a bump or a bite, if you've got a really fast action tip on your rods like these St. Croix do, what you're gonna feel is you're just gonna feel a little bit of a bump, like a, like a, just a, a hair's breadth of a bump. And what happens is you're not gonna, don't horse it, I promise you, don't horse it. You're gonna, you're gonna miss them, you're gonna pull that hook right out of their mouth but more often than not. What you ought to do is just kind of apply gentle pressure and just lean back just very slightly. And then once you feel a little resistance, then set just a little bit harder. And that'll really help help you with a hook set. It'll improve your hook set a lot with these fish. So hope that tip is helpful. And I hope that means you guys are gonna catch a lot more fish. All right, let's get on. South Carolina is 14 inches to keep sheep in, so he's got to get a little bit bigger. All right, buddy. I just got done re-rigging, so I want to show you what we're throwing. We've got our 6'6 St. Croix. Stan got me this rod a few years ago for my birthday, and it is the perfect sheep head rod. That's because it's an extra fast, so it has a very sensitive tip, which allows you to really feel that bite. I've got 10 pound main line and tied onto that is a 15 pound leader with a double uni knot down to the hook which is tied on with an improved clinch knot. I like an improved clinch knot at my hook because while both the improved clinch knot and the double uni are very strong knots, the improved clinch knot is just a little bit weaker than that double uni. So if you get snagged up, more often than not, you're gonna break at the improved clinch knot. So you'll just lose the hook and not your leader. I'm using number five split shot. Um, I usually need about two to three, depending on the current. I have that about three to four inches up from the hook with a number two Mustad um, O'Shaughnessy hook. It's a short, short shank live bait hook. Perfect for sheep head. Stan is using the knocker rig. So same setup as mine, except he's got a quarter ounce weight tied on. Um, at the bottom of the leader, and then the hook. For bait, we're using feather crabs. And that's it. Hat change. We both got skunked last trip, so we both got to wear the hat. That'll shake the skunk. Nice little sheep head. 
All right guys, so how I look to, like to hook these fiddler crabs. So here's just your typical fiddler crab. There's about a hundred different uh, species of fiddler crabs. This is what I call a China back fiddler crab. The males have really large claws. The females have two small claws. Um, so anyway, China back because they kind of have like a purplish, um, kind of a colorful back. Uh, anyway, there's two different, real. there's many different ways you can hook them, but the most popular way is from the bottom and then poking out the top just a little bit of your hook point point. and another way I like to hook them is like kind of through the side so just above his legs I like to go in like right there and well that's always a risk is he'll drop his claw sometimes throw that out there that good chum anyway so you can kind of hook them through the bottom you kind of get to get the point and uh, that way the, the point of the hook is just barely coming out the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see that, or, but that's pretty effective too. I like it that one. today another shorty all right guys had a good day a um, few challenges along the way uh, a little bit of uh, rough conditions out there that weren't really forecasted uh, the boat was um, rocking and rolling a little bit it seemed like we were repositioning the boat more often than fishing today The bite was pretty tough too. Um, we did manage uh, about four sheephead, I think, three or four sheephead, and uh, they're all kind of on the small size. Um, we had some challenges too with the trailer um, when we got back. The bunk board, um, some of the hardware had fallen off. So it looks like I got my uh, looks like I got my work cut out for me there with the trailer. But hey, how can we complain? You know, um, a bad day on the water is better than any good day on shore. So we're just happy to be out there, and we're certainly blessed to be able to do this. And uh, um, thankful for all your support as well. So thanks again for watching. Um, really appreciate it. Shout out to all of our new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you're new around here, you might be curious about the skunk hat. I'll leave a video in the description explaining the skunk hat. All right. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch, catch you, you next time. time. We left the fiddler crabs in the car. <laughs> so thankfully, thankfully we don't have too much too far to go. It's about three minutes away to the boat landing, so we're just gonna go back over there and grab our fiddler crabs because without crabs, I don't know if we're gonna catch many fish. So 